Hello everyone, how's it going? Welcome to another video tutorial by Analyst Q. This video is part 2 of our tutorial about dictionaries in Q. In part 1, we discuss what dictionaries are, how to create them, how to update dictionaries, and add and remove entries, among other things. In this part, we'll dive a little deeper into some built-in functions you can run on dictionaries and end with how dictionaries relate to tables. First of all, I forgot to mention type of a dictionary in the previous video. Dictionaries are always of type 99. And we can see here, here's the sample dictionary um, I'm gonna create. With the, we had the same dictionary in the previous video. And if you run the type of function on that, you'll get type 99. So keep that in mind. Now let's take a look at some built-in functions you can run on dictionaries. Many of these you'll rec recognize from our video Introduction to List Part 2. Let's see how they, how the output looks like when they're used on a dictionary instead. So here's what our dictionary looks like. We just defined that here. Um, you can use the operator or the function count which will return you um, the number of key value pairs that you have in the dictionary. So here we have one, two, three. So it'll return three. Now, if the values of your dictionary are of numerical type, you can use common mathematical operations that are available for numerical types. So, for example, you know, sum. Sum will give you, if you run that on a list, it will give you a list, uh, uh, one output, one value that is the total sum of the uh, each individual element. So here, <clears throat> our values are of numerical type. So if you run sum on that, we'll get some of these three values, which is 70. Now, just to show you what happens if our values were not of numerical type. So here's another dictionary that we have uh, where the values are symbols. This is what it looks like. Now if we try to run sum on that, we'll get a type error. Some other operations you can uh, run on dictionaries are, for example, first and last. And first will give you the first value, which was 22. And if you run last on it, it'll give you 25. It's very similar to how it works on lists. Now here are some mathematical operations that you can use in dictionaries. So average, right? Gives you the average of those three numbers. Median will give you the median. Max will give you the max. And minimum will give you the minimum. Similarly, dev will give you standard deviation. Var will give you variation, variance, sorry. Um, neg will give you um, will negate the values however here I'm going to show you now some examples where the output is is not a single uh, integer or, or you know a numerical type it's actually uh, is a dictionary so here <clears throat> if you were to run neg on a dictionary it it returns the whole dictionary but the values are negated similarly if you were to run deltas, uh, now recall deltas gives you, if you run deltas on a list, it'll give you the running difference on that list. Um, if you run it on a dictionary, it will use the values um, as a list and will only operate on that. So deltas A will give you the running difference of these values. Now the first one will be just itself because there's nothing before that. You can also run the function ascending on the dictionary and it will just sort the values in ascending order which is what we had to begin with anyways so if you uh, call descending on it it'll sort it in descending order we can also reverse the order um, here you go and now because our values are all in numerical, um, are of numerical type, if we try to run the function upper, which is supposed to take uh, a list of characters and convert them to uh, you know, uppercase, then we will get an error. And that's mainly because we're only dealing with numerical types here. Now, if we had a dictionary with um, something different uh, types like symbols, for example, we, we had defined it earlier, you know, we have this dictionary where the values are not of numerical type. If we run upper on that, you'll get the values in uppercase. So keep that in mind. Now you can also you can also join two dictionaries by using the operator comma. So 
here we have dictionary A and B, and we can join them uh, with using this syntax. The output will contain keys from both dictionaries, but the values of the common keys will get updated by the right dictionary. All right, so here you see that we have four keys and four values. The four keys are as a union of the dictionary, both A and B. So each dictionary had three keys, but there were a total of four unique keys. Now the values here, um, the because we have dictionary B on the right side, we'll get the values updated um, from B. So for any key that is present in um, dictionary B, we'll get the values from there. So in our case, we have Joe, Jane, and Mike that are available in dictionary B. So the values that you see here will come from dictionary B. Josh uh, is not present in dictionary B, so it will keep its value from dictionary A, which is 25. Now, if we were to reverse the, the order and put dictionary A on the right-hand side, you'll get a different result. Here you'll see that the, the values are coming from dictionary A for any of the keys that are present in dictionary A. Mike is a key that is not there in dictionary A, so it'll keep its value from dictionary B. Finally, let's discuss column dictionaries and why they're interesting. A column dictionary is simply a dictionary where you have a list of symbols mapped to a rectangular list of lists. Here's an example of what a column dictionary looks like. So we have a, we're defining a dictionary and assigning it to variable t. Um, the keys are going to be sim, price, and size, and here's our rectangular uh, list of lists. And let's see what that looks like. You'll notice something interesting about this dictionary compared to some earlier ones that we have defined. This dictionary seems very much like a table where you have some columns and rows of values. The only difference is that this dictionary is a sort of a sideways table, right? Uh, like the columns are here instead of being on the top. Um, and then the rows, you know, go sideways instead of going, going down vertically. Now let's do, uh, let's run a type on this and just make sure that this is a dictionary, All right? So type 99, yes, we confirm that's a dictionary. Now, here's an interesting way to convert this dictionary into a table. And to do that, we can use this built-in function called flip. So we're going to flip dictionary T, assign it to a new variable trade, and we're going to see what that looks like. There you go. So this now looks like a table. We've basically taken this dictionary and flipped it um, so that the, the keys are on the top and then the, the rows are here. Now, if we were to run type on this, let's see what we get. All right, so the type of this table, of this, what used to be a dictionary has changed to 98. Uh, all tables have type 98, so we can confirm that we no longer are dealing with a dictionary, but a table. We'll now conclude this video with a very important lesson. Tables are simply flipped column dictionaries. Keep that in mind, it's, you're gonna need to know that um, to really understand how tables work. And given that, you know, QKDB, uh, KDB is a time series database, most of the times you are going to be working with tables. So this is very important. I hope you enjoyed this video. In this video, we covered a lot of different built-in functions you can run in dictionaries, as well as how we can create tables from column dictionaries. As always, feel free to leave comments if you have any feedback or suggestions. You can also email me at himanchu at enlistq.com. Thanks.